In a world where nature is the cause of both destruction and greatness, nothing can compare to the power of natural disasters and storms. We, who live in the digital age, have had the rare opportunity to witness moments of bright sunshine and terrifying thunderstorms through the lens of a camera. In today's episode, let's look back at Mother Nature's seven terrifying minutes in Syria and see the mysterious reason behind it. Smash that thumbs up button for me, leave me a comment down below and share this video with your friends. And let's get started. Firstly, storm. Storms are not only a nightmare in reality, but also a symbol of human confrontation with a great and unpredictable power. When a storm approaches, not only the physical environment, but also the human mind and spirit are put to the test. Feelings of anxiety and fear spread through every citizen as they try to prepare and cope with the threat to their lives and property. From a distance, a storm may look like a dark, billowing bank of clouds in the sky, but as it approaches, its power makes everything present and harsh. The winds swept away everything in their path, but they also blew horrifying sounds, shattering the feeling of safety and stability. Heavy rain falls like a giant puddle, flooding everywhere, increasing the risk of flooding and inundating residences. But perhaps the most terrifying thing was the huge wave, with its terrible power washing away everything in sight. The sight of giant waves crashing onto the shore, causing everything to disintegrate and disappear, is an unforgettable image of horror. Innocent people became extremely weak in the face of this uncontrollable force, and in their final moments, they could only watch as their precious things disappeared into nothingness. Secondly, flood. Floods are not only a hazard, but also a real nightmare for everyone. As the rushing waters wash away everything in their path, nothing can escape its power. Homes, infrastructure, and even people's daily lives can be destroyed in an instant. The scenes of roofs washed away, cars tilted in the water, and people trapped on tree branches or rooftops were images of horror and disaster. People trapped in isolated places are the worst victims of floods. They may be completely isolated, without water or food, and waiting for help from rescue forces. While machines and technology can help in the rescue, the reality is that the harsh geographical conditions and the power of the water seem insurmountable. Tension and fear increase with each passing hour as people battle rising floodwaters and try to find ways to survive in the most difficult conditions. Thirdly, thunderstorm. In the sky, when dark clouds rolled and thunder echoed, everyone knew that a storm was approaching. The sound of thunder is not merely a noise, but an expression of incredible and terrifying natural power. This not only shook the land, but also shook people's hearts. The combination of the roaring sound and the flash of thunder created an indescribable feeling of terror and panic. When a thunderstorm roars, light shines and burns in space, creating a magical but at the same time terrifying picture. Under the bright light, everything looked bleak and the silence became eerie as everyone waited to see what horrors would follow. In addition, lightning is also a cause of terrible forest fires. When lightning strikes a dry forest, fire breaks out instantly, spreading quickly and destroying everything in sight. The sight of columns of black smoke rising into the sky and flames eager to destroy everything makes it impossible not to feel panic and loss of control. Fourthly, wind and tornadoes. In the sky, when dark clouds rolled and thunder echoed, everyone knew that a storm was approaching. The sound of thunder is not merely a noise, but an expression of incredible and terrifying natural power. This not only shook the land, but also shook people's hearts. The combination of the roaring sound and the flash of thunder created an indescribable feeling of terror and panic. When a thunderstorm roars, light shines and burns in space, creating a magical, but at the same time, terrifying picture. Under the bright light, everything looked bleak and the silence became eerie as everyone waited to see what horrors would follow. Fifthly, hailstorm. 
Hail is one of the most terrifying and terrifying weather phenomena that nature can bring. When large stones fall from the sky to the ground, they not only destroy everything in their path, but also create feelings of horror and phobia for everyone. From a distance, hail may look like small stones falling from the sky, but when they hit the ground, the consequences are unpredictable. Large stones can destroy roofs, break windows, and cause serious injuries to people. The sound of hail also adds to the terror, with extremely loud explosions and crashes. Faced with hail, people feel extremely weak and extremely helpless. Although we can try to shield and protect, faced with this unpredictable natural force, people often can do nothing but wait for it to pass. The consequences of hail can be severe and long-lasting, with everything from houses to pastures destroyed and destroyed. Sixthly, flash flood. Flash floods are not just another natural nightmare, but also one of the worst disasters humans can face. With large amounts of water washing away everything in its path, a flash flood can destroy everything it passes through in a matter of seconds. From beautiful green forests to small residential areas, nothing can escape the destruction of flash floods. Clumps of dirt, rocks, plants and other objects were swept away in the water, creating terrifying piles of rubble. The scenes of houses submerged in water, cars swept away like sheets of paper, and people fighting for survival in the highest places are just a small part of what flash floods can do. Leave behind. The consequences of flash floods can be severe and long-lasting. Survivors may face loss of property and loved ones, feelings of loss and confusion. Areas affected by flash floods may also have difficulty recovering and rebuilding infrastructure, affecting the lives of thousands of people. Above are terrifying moments from Mother Nature. Now, let's learn about the country of Syria. Syria is a country located on the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea in southwestern Asia. Its area includes territory in the Golan Heights that has been occupied by Israel since 1967. The present area does not coincide with ancient Syria, which was the strip of fertile land lying between the eastern Mediterranean coast and the desert of northern Arabia. The capital is Damascus on the Barada River, situated in an oasis at the foot of Mount Kisiyun, the winds of Syria. In winter, the prevailing winds blow from the east, the north, and the west. In summer, the prevailing winds are either northerly or westerly. During the summer, the coastal region is subject to westerly winds during the day and easterly ones at night. Once or twice a year, sand-bearing winds, or kamsin, raise a wall of dust some 5,000 feet or 1,500 meters high, which darkens the sky. So do they have any meaning in the Bible? It is not surprising that I say this is the wrath of God. God's wrath is the protection of all righteous forces and all good things. God's intolerance of offense is a disposition unique to him. God's wrath is a disposition unique to him. God's majesty is also an essence that is unique to him. The principle behind God's anger demonstrates the identity and status that only he has. Needless to say, this principle is also a symbol of the essence of the unique and incomparable God himself. God's disposition is his inherent essence, and this disposition does not change at all with the shifts of time, nor does it change with the changes of geographical space. His inherent disposition is the inherent essence of God. No matter with whom he performs his work, his essence does not change, and neither does his righteous disposition. When a person makes God angry, he reveals his inherent disposition. At that moment, the principle behind his anger did not change, nor did his unique identity and status. He did not become angry because of a change in his essence or because of other factors that had appeared in his disposition, but it was humanity's opposition to him that offended his disposition. Sir Mankind's blatant provocation of God is a serious challenge to his identity and position. Will God return after the storm? The Saviour told Joseph Smith, I will reveal myself from heaven with power and great glory and dwell in righteousness with men on earth a thousand years 
and the wicked shall not stand. Jesus has told us that certain signs and events will warn us when the time of his second coming is near. We can continue to list these events and lament the suffering they cause, yet your Bible reveals that today's worst disasters pale in comparison to what is to come, occurs before Christ returns at the end of this age. The book of Revelation explains, there was a noise, thunder, and lightning, and there was a great earthquake, a great and great earthquake, such as had not occurred since man was on the earth in 1618. The Bible reveals that terrible times are ahead before Christ returns. For one nation will rise against another, and one nation will rise against another. There will be famine, pestilence, and earthquakes in many places. All this is the beginning of sorrow in Matthew 24, 7, 8. Of course, it's always prudent to prepare for emergencies or natural disasters. But while doomsday preppers stockpile vast amounts of food, water, and resources, the only preparation that will ultimately protect you from what is about to happen around the world is stay close to your Savior and do what He tells you to do. Most Christians think that the day of the last judgment is the day when Jesus, who came as the Savior 2,000 years ago, comes to this earth again. They commonly imagine the scene where Jesus comes on the clouds floating in the sky and execute judgment by fire immediately, and the saved people enter the kingdom of heaven. However, the Bible does not teach that. Jesus is coming in clouds and his coming in blazing fire. The appearance of Jesus who comes on the clouds is different from that of Jesus who appears in blazing fire. So the time and purpose of his first coming is also different from those of his second coming. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. In 24, 30, 31. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. In LK 21, 27, 28. The time when Jesus comes on the clouds is not the day when the wicked are judged and God's people enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is to come in clouds before judging the wicked. The purpose of Jesus' coming in clouds is not to judge and punish the world. As Jesus has told us to prepare for salvation because the kingdom of heaven is near, the purpose of his coming in clouds is to give his elect the opportunity for salvation. After this, he will come in blazing fire as the judge and execute his punishment. See, the Lord is coming with fire, and his chariots are like a whirlwind. He will bring down his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For with fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment upon all men, and many will be those slain by the Lord. Isa 66, 15, 16 and give relief to you who are troubled, and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power on the day he comes. 2 Thel 1 7 10. The reason why Jesus comes in clouds before the last judgment. If Jesus only comes as the judge, there is no one in this world who can be saved. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? LK 18, 8. Will he find faith on the earth? By saying this, Jesus means that he will not find anyone who has faith when he comes again. It is because there is no one who has true faith worthy enough to be saved, even though so many people claim to believe in Jesus. Faith is an absolute condition for salvation. If God immediately executes his judgment upon the world where there is no faith, who on earth will be able to be saved? 
2,000 years ago, Jesus established the truth of the new covenant, and after his ascension, the devil sowed weeds, lawlessness, among the wheat. In this world filled with the weeds, no one can realize the truth by himself or have faith worthy enough to be saved. Month 13, 24, 43, Da 7, 25. So, to restore the truth of the new covenant which was destroyed during the Dark Ages, and to gather God's people so that they can have true faith which leads to salvation, Jesus must come as the Savior first before he comes as the judge. Jesus is coming in the flesh again. Jesus is prophesied to come in the clouds. Here, the clouds represent flesh. In the Bible, the people living in this world are likened to the waters, and the human society consisting of people from many different backgrounds are likened to the sea, Rev 1715. Especially, the clouds which are formed by condensed water vapor refer to those who are born again by the Holy Spirit, among all people who have the flesh. Clouds give water to every living creature on the earth. Water is necessary for the survival of all living organisms. The prophecy that Jesus will come in the clouds means that he will come in the flesh, which is represented as clouds, and will give rain, the water of life, to his elect. Rev 22.17 Through the prophecy about Jesus who came 2,000 years ago, we can confirm the fact that the clouds which Jesus comes on represent flesh. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power, the Kingdom KJV. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Da 713, 14. Jesus came to this earth in the flesh and preached the truth of life. He fulfilled all the prophecies about the Son of Man described in the book of Daniel by coming in the flesh and receiving authority, glory, and sovereign power, a kingdom which belong only to God. Mount 28, 18, John 17, 10, LK 22, 29. The main reason why the Jews failed to receive Jesus who came according to the prophecies of the Bible was that Jesus Christ was far different from the Messiah of their own imagination. They expected that the magnificent kingdom of God would be established before their eyes right away when Christ came. However, Jesus came as a humble man just like one of them and taught them about the invisible kingdom of God and spiritual salvation. The sense of betrayal which they created by themselves made them reject and hate Jesus and even commit the sin of crucifying him on the cross without hesitation. Today, Christians have the same kind of expectations for the second coming of Jesus as the Jewish people had. Just as the Bible prophesied that Jesus would come in clouds at his second coming, he came again in the flesh before the last judgment to give us the water of life. However, many people view Jesus just from a physical standpoint, and they are still only looking at the clouds in the sky, turning their faces away from Jesus even though he already came in the flesh. Jesus is coming to Zion at his second coming. When Christ comes with fire, there is no more opportunity to repent and turn back to God to be saved, because salvation is already determined. So when Jesus comes in the flesh a second time and gathers his elect, we must receive him and learn the truth of salvation that Christ personally teaches us. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Mike 4, 1, 2. The Lord's temple, which people stream to in the last days, refers to Zion where the temple of God is built. Zion is the church that keeps the feasts of God, Isa 33, 20. 
Before the Last Judgment, Jesus is to come to Zion in the flesh again to personally lead his people to the way of truth. Only those who are led by him can have enough faith to be saved when God is revealed from heaven in blazing fire as the judge at the last day. It is obviously wrong to think that the world will be judged immediately when Jesus comes a second time. We want everyone to come to salvation by realizing the biblical teaching which shows that Jesus' second coming is different from his coming at the last judgment and receiving Jesus who has come to Zion in the flesh again in the last days. But what will happen in the immediate aftermath of Jesus' second coming? There are many ideas about what Jesus will do after he returns. Some believe he will return for a short time and then return to heaven either leaving the earth inhabited by mortals or destroying it completely. The idea of total destruction is related to the concept of the end of the world. But as we will see, Jesus' return is not the end of the world in the sense of planet earth. It will be the end of one age and the beginning of a new one. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. The first detail Jesus gave about what will happen after his return is found in Matthew 24, 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Despite the fact that Jesus will return as the ultimate liberator, he will not be greeted that way. Instead, he will be viewed by most as a threat. Consider that before Christ's second coming, the world will experience frightening and destructive time of cosmic disturbances. The book of Revelation describes the stars of heaven falling to earth, Revelation 6.13, likely a reference to intense meteor showers. This will cause people to fearfully take cover under rocks and in caves, verse 15. After experiencing this, people will be terrified of anything coming from the sky, especially a being who will be introduced by an ear-piercing noise and who will look unlike anything anyone has ever seen before. Most will not recognize him as Jesus Christ, perhaps because he will not look like the image our world associates with Jesus. He won't be the soft, long-haired, pale Jesus of art and movies. He will appear as an immensely powerful and radiant spirit being, some may even think he's an alien invading the earth from outer space, but the people on earth won't just mourn or cower in fear at his coming. The book of Revelation describes a human effort to launch a military counterattack against him. The formerly warring armies of the earth will join forces together to make war against him who sat on the horse, Revelation 19.19. But this counterattack will fail miserably as Jesus will quickly destroy this army and its leaders, verses 20, 21. They will be no match for their creator. Jesus is coming to liberate and bring peace, but he'll have to fight against those nations first, Zechariah 14, 3. See also Revelation 19, 11. This is one of the most encouraging verses in the entire Olivet Discourse. As Jesus is descending to earth, he'll be followed by an army of angels from heaven. They will be responsible for gathering God's faithful saints who are scattered from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, meaning they are scattered all over the earth. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.